timing related devices such as a toaster, washing machine or coffee machine require circuits and components that generate voltage pulses. When a voltage pulse of known duration is applied across an LED, it lights up for that duration and then it turns off. A monostable multivibrator is a circuit that can produce a voltage pulse. The name monostable means that the circuit has only one stable state. The circuit is normally stable and outputs a low voltage. But when the circuit is triggered, such as from a push button, it enters an unstable state and outputs a higher voltage. After some time, the circuit automatically returns to its stable state and the output becomes low again. In this video, we will learn how a transistor-based monostable multivibrator circuit works. Let's begin. This is the circuit diagram of monostable multivibrator. The circuit consists of four resistors, one capacitor, and two transistors. Let's understand the purpose of the capacitor. If I connect it across a voltage source such as a 9 volt battery, the capacitor charges, and the voltage across it is proportional to the charge stored. So, voltage across the capacitor V subscript C rises and reaches the supplied voltage, which is 9 volt in my case. We can say that the capacitor is charged. Now, even if the voltage source is removed, voltage across the capacitor remains at the same level until you short the two leads of the capacitor using a conductor, which immediately discharges the capacitor. Next, let's try connecting a resistor in series with the capacitor and then connect it to the voltage source. This time, voltage across the capacitor does not increase instantly. After some time, it reaches the supplied voltage, that is 9 volts. The reason why voltage rises slowly this time is because the resistor resists the flow of charge and due to this, voltage buildup across the capacitor becomes slower. The capacitor can also be discharged by using the same resistor. Just connect the resistor in parallel by shorting these two points. This way, the capacitor discharges slowly. It takes approximately 5 RC to completely charge or completely discharge a capacitor. So, the capacitor will take more time to charge if you increase resistance or capacitance in the circuit. Next, let's understand the purpose of the transistor. It is used as a switch in the multivibrator. Basically, when a voltage of around 0.7 volt is applied across base and emitter terminal of the transistor, it acts as a closed switch between collector and emitter. Now, if a load is connected at the collector side, the current through the load can be controlled by using the base voltage. Also note that the base to emitter junction of the transistor is just like a PN junction diode. So, it requires at least 0.7 volts to turn the transistor on. However, if the base voltage is less than 0.7 volts, then the transistor turns off. Also, if the base voltage is above 0.7 volts, such as 9 volts, then a resistor must be connected in series to limit current. This way, the transistor turns on and voltage across base and emitter remains around 0.7 volts. If a push button is connected across base and emitter of the transistor, pressing the button will turn the transistor off. That's because all the current flows through the push button instead of flowing through the base of the transistor. But when the button is released, the transistor turns on again. Now, what will be the voltage across collector and emitter when the transistor is at closed position or at open position? At open position, since no current is flowing and hence no voltage drop across the collector resistor, therefore the whole supplied voltage appears across collector and emitter. At closed position, collector is shorted to the emitter. Therefore, voltage across collector and emitter at closed position is 0 volts. Now that we have learned the fundamentals, let's jump to the monostable multivibrator circuit. 
The circuit consists of two NPN transistors with collector resistors. To turn transistor Q1 on, a resistor R1 is connected like this. And to turn Q2 on, a base resistor R2 is connected. Next, a capacitor is connected, one terminal at the collector of first transistor and the other terminal at the base of second transistor. To trigger the circuit, a push button is connected between base and emitter of Q2. Lastly, the power source VCC is connected like this. The output can be taken from Q2 between collector and emitter. When the push button is pressed, the circuit outputs a voltage pulse like this. Let's make the circuit on a breadboard. The circuit is complete. Now let's power it up using a 9 volt battery. Let's test the circuit. As you can see, the LED glowed for some time and then it turned off. This clearly shows that the circuit produces a voltage pulse. But how the circuit works? When powering up the circuit, both transistors try to activate. Q1 tries to activate because of base current through this part as shown. And Q2 tries to activate because of base current through this part. But there is a higher chance that Q2 activates first. That's due to the presence of this capacitor. In a transistor, there exists parasitic capacitance across its terminals. It is small but it can become a significant factor in switching applications. In a transistor circuit, when the base resistor is connected, an RC circuit is formed. It takes a few nanoseconds to charge this parasitic capacitor. The transistor remains off until 0.7 volt is reached across the capacitor. So there is a delay of switching the transistor. If a capacitor is connected in parallel with the base resistor, this time current bypasses through this capacitor and quickly charges the parasitic capacitor. This way delay of switching is reduced. So in the multi vibrator during power up, current bypasses through this capacitor and quickly turns Q2 on. So Q2 activates faster than Q1. Now that Q2 is on, the output voltage is 0 volts and this voltage also appears across base and emitter of Q1. Therefore, Q1 remains off as a transistor requires at least 0.7 volts to turn on. This is a stable state because Q2 remains on as there is a continuous supply of base current and Q1 remains off due to 0 volt being applied between its base and emitter terminal. During this stable state, the capacitor charges in this part and it charges up to VCC minus 0.7 volts. That's because left hand side plate of the capacitor is at VCC as Q1 is off and the right hand side plate of the capacitor is at 0.7 volts as Q2 is on. So the capacitor charges up to the difference of these two voltages that is VCC minus 0.7 volts. Also note that the capacitor charges quickly due to the low collector resistance in the charging part. To make the circuit unstable, Q1 must be on and Q2 must be off. This can be done by triggering the circuit. The push button is used for this purpose. But really it can be any input. You can also use a differentiator to trigger the circuit using a pulse signal coming from another circuit. To make it simple, let's stick with the push button for now. 
When the button is pressed, voltage across base and emitter of transistor Q2 becomes 0 volts and it turns off. After that, the transistor Q1 turns on. That's because current can easily flow through the base of it in this part. The output voltage transitions from low to high. Also, notice that the voltage across capacitor C appears across base and emitter of the transistor Q2. I have used NPN transistors which require positive voltage at base with respect to emitter. But notice that the negative polarity of C is at base and the positive polarity of it at emitter. This high negative voltage strongly keeps the transistor Q2 off even if the button is released. The transistor Q1 which was previously off is now on and the transistor Q2 which was previously on is now off. This is the unstable state of the multivibrator because after some time the circuit returns to its stable position. Let's understand how. The capacitor which is applying a negative voltage to the base of Q2 now charges in the opposite direction through this part. The capacitor charges slowly this time because of high resistance R2 in the charging part. Voltage across the capacitor which is being applied across base and emitter of Q2 increases from previously charged voltage towards VCC. The capacitor charges slowly and as it reaches 0 0.7 volts, the transistor Q2 turns on. Because Q2 is on, Q1 turns off. So this is how the circuit attains stable state. And the output voltage transitions from high to low. Then the capacitor charges in this part and the circuit can be triggered again. So that's how a monostable multivibrator circuit works. This is how the output waveform looks on the oscilloscope screen. The pulse duration can be found by using this equation. What we can observe is that higher the value of resistor R2 or capacitor C, longer will be the duration of the pulse output of the monostable multivibrator. You can try different values of R2 and C to make longer or shorter pulse duration. As I said earlier, when powering up the circuit, there is a higher chance that Q2 turns on first because of this capacitor. But if you de-energize and energize the circuit, what you can see is that the circuit can go into unstable state, even without triggering. This can happen because the capacitor may not be fully discharged during power up. To be absolutely sure that Q2 turns on initially, connect a small capacitor such as 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor across base and emitter of Q1. This way Q2 always turns on first during power up. To design a monostable multivibrator, first step is to choose RC1, around 2 to 10 kilo ohms. I have chosen 4.7 kilo ohms as RC1. Next step is to choose R1, around 10 times the value of RC1. In my case, RC1 is 4.7 kilo ohms, so R1 equals 10 times 4.7k, which equals 47 kilo ohms. The values of resistor R2 and capacitor C should be so chosen that it gives the desired pulse duration. In my case, I have used R2 of 10 kilo ohms and C of 470 microfarad. So the pulse duration comes out to be 3.257 seconds. This can sometimes be very off with the practical values due to tolerances of resistors and capacitors. So always test the circuit. Last but not least, the resistor RC2 should be so chosen that it can supply appropriate current to the load, such as LED. Use this formula to find the value of RC2. The blue LED I am using takes around 20 milliamps at 3.2 volts. So in the equation, the supplied voltage VCC is 9 volts, 
the load voltage VL is 3.2 volts and the load current IL is 20 milliamps. After solving this, I have got RC2 equals to 290 ohms. The closest resistance value I got is 330 ohms. This way the circuit worked perfectly. Please support me by sharing this video to your friends. Thank you so much for watching.